So we're going to create a base validator to ensure that any input, not just if the zip's even there, but anything we give the function is legit. Your inputs into a database, even just querying, are some of the first lines of defenses to verify that you don't get NoSQL injection attacks. But more importantly, you actually have a chance in heck as yourself or consumers of your API and actually debugging what went wrong. Something like this is not helpful. We don't know if it's a string, if it's not there, if it's undefined, if it's the wrong format. There's a variety of things that can go wrong with the zip code. And the only way to do those types of things is to have very powerful and dependable assertions around those particular things. We do that with pure functions that are unit tested like Cray. So let's create a validator function and I'll show you what that is first. So let's go into testing. This is our sandbox. It's a JS file. It has nothing in it. Console.log. Let's go ahead and import Lodash. He's an uber dependable, battle-tested predicate library we can build on top of. So the first thing you have is a predicate you make yourself called legit string. Even validating if the zip data type you get back is even a string. Maybe somebody's trying to send you some crazy object or eval statement. Take an input and verify for now if it's a string or not. If we log out legit string of cow and we say node testing JS, we're gonna get true. That's cool. What if we do an empty string? How is that? And it says that's also true. It's still a string, it's just blank. And if we pass in one, we get a false because the number one is a number, it's not a string. Now that's fine, but we want to make sure that blank is not going to pass in true. So we're going to add a statement here and say o.length is greater than zero. So it has to be a string. And if it is a string, this won't short circuit. I'll go to this one and verify that the string length is greater than zero. So blank will now report false because blanks are string. Now that's great. But if you're debugging this at runtime, you don't know why string is not legit unless you physically go look at the function and think. If you've ever read Steve Krug's book about don't make me think that applies to programming as well. If you have to think as a programmer, you're going to someday offload that ability to your user and you don't want your users to think. So we're going to say result if result equals equals false. So log must be a string data type and have a length greater than zero. Otherwise, String is legit and we've got our function. Now, when we run this now, we get must be a string data type and have a length of greater than zero. So we know why it failed. If we fix it based on that error message of going, oh, okay, I read my code, string is legit. Now you're legit. You read it, simply an error code. Now, if you're a user of React and Angular 2, you can immediately recognize this. <laughs> if you've ever used React, you know how its error messages are always like, this is what you did wrong. This is probably why it happened. And here's what you might need to do to remedy it. So I'll leave it at that. What if there's a way to associate this with the actual function that caused the problem? We can do that. Functions are variables in JavaScript and objects, so you can use the decorator pattern and add whatever you want. So we'll put error code and we'll copy paste this to make our code dry. So now you can anywhere, use it anywhere and have the same error code. And then we'll just replace this. Now we can use this anywhere and always refer to that one variable and figure out why things broke. So if you rerun it, your string is legit. If we break it, it'll use the variable on the function. So what if there's a way to do this one time? What if, ladies and gentlemen, there was a way to do all of that in one line of code? We're going to do that right now. We are going to use something called a validator function. So if you go into predicates here, it is a file that has one function called a validator that it exports. And what it does is take whatever method you give it and wrap it with another one to avoid modifying your original method. So it doesn't mutate original state. It does the exact same thing we did before though and have the error code attached to the method. This predicate returns true, we're fine. But if it returns false, we know to look at the error code to figure out why it returned false. What did we do wrong? When you create a bunch of validators with a bunch of falses, you have a variety of error messages to help you figure out what went wrong. For now, we're just gonna use our validator. We'll go back to testing and import it. We'll then recreate our predicate functions ourselves. So if we pass something that is string, a string, it'll tell us if it is or not. And our not blank, we'll do is string just to be uber sure of the data type. We don't want exceptions, we want pure functions here. 
the string is greater than zero, it's not blank. Now these are the normal predicate function to do before. Now we're just gonna add our validators. And all they do is use the predicate we created and say, look, if is string fails, please tell me why. Well, I'll tell you why, not a string data type. That's why. So if is string fails, they know why. Now imagine this was is zip fails. You wanna know why? This is blank. If a string, it's empty cannot be a blank string. And this is why not blank would fail. So if not blank returns false, they have a chance in heck of knowing why. If this string fails with a false, they know why. Go ahead and test it out and show you that it works just like a regular function. We'll say log string validator, s and cow. And you can see it returns true with cow. And a blank is still considered a string. So it returns true. And with a one, it's a number. It's false. And lastly, if this fails, how do we know? Well, the, the reason why is embedded inside of the function itself. So we'll log out the actual error. It's not a string data type. So if you pass in something that returns false, you now know why that this would return false. That's the basic of validators, predicate functions that tell you why they fail. And when you create hundreds of these things and gobble them together, you have a variety of error messages that help you debug why your inputs were wrong.